another really creative one, and this is going to be in your um, Alfred resource guide also. It's called Music Manipulatives. In the world of technology, we get really uh, used to, how, how many of you have smart boards? Some of us do. Or technology that we can use for presenting a lesson. Okay. I know I can get into a habit of making that my manipulative. Smart board. I'm just going to have them go to the smart board and move these things around. But I think we forget how important tactile learning is. And making manipulatives that they can actually use with their own hands and shape with their own hands. So this is an entire book. There are 30 different lessons that you can have for manipulatives that are cheap, and you can make and would give the kids an extra bit of learning. Uh, they're going to teach rhythm, melody, harmony, form, notation, composition, <laughs> singing, playing. She even gives you information on how to store the manipulatives, because that's, that's tricky too. All right, I've made all this stuff, now what the heck do I do with this? So she gives you ideas on how to store that. Uh, you can use everything from balloons to pinwheels to plastic eggs, and that's what I brought with me today. Now, <clears throat> I'm sure when they saw this in the x-ray machine <laughs> at the airport, they were trying to figure out if there was something explosive in each egg. I don't know. But anyway, she suggests you get the smaller eggs. These are the only ones that I had available. Get the smaller eggs. She talks about the process of filling them with different things inside. And then you don't want to put the tape on because you know what's going to happen with the tape. The kids are going to tear it off. So she spends the time hot gluing it. But once she does it the first time, it's basically a fixed deal. All right, so this is pretty easy to do just the way I did it. And she fills these up with different things, but she pairs them. So two eggs will have the same thing in them all the way throughout. Then she hides them in her room. Now, how fun is that? She hides an egg for every child that's there. Now, if you have 50 kids and you're about one time, that's probably not going to work. But if you have a class of 20, 30, wherever it is, you can probably make that work. They don't have to be hidden. They can be outside, but everyone gets one egg, okay? So once they get the eggs, here we go, I'm going to, who doesn't have an instrument? I know some of you feel really defeated, but you don't have an instrument. But now you have an egg. You have an instrument? I hope you can catch. Ready? Oh, she's like, oh. All right, so these kids now have these eggs in their hands, and we have them shake them so that they, we can listen to the timbre. That's what this lesson's about. So I need you to shake yours. Okay, can you hear that? All right. So would you shake yours? Oh, is that the same? No. And so is one higher uh, in pitch, or is it, you know, you talk about that. Which one has a... Lower sound. What can you describe the sound in the What do you? How would you describe your sound? Okay. All right. How about you? Okay. For you. Last louder, wasn't it? But was it the same as this person's? Would you read yours? Would you? So those two are not the same, right? So would you shake? You two shake? All right, so they find their pairs. Then after they find their pairs, they discuss with each other what they think might be inside or what makes their sound unique. Just understanding how to describe something is challenging for little ones. Okay, so now I'm just gonna ask you curiously, what do you two think you have in your eggs? You think you have rice? Did you look? No. <laughs> well, yeah, because it's like, and it, so I might even ask the kids, why do you think it might have that in there? All right. What do you think you have in yours? Nuts and bolts. Nuts and bolts. <laughs> She's right, but don't tell my husband. <laughs> <laughs> he does not know, but he's missing. <laughs> she probably could tell that too because of the weight of it, right? How about you? Is it? What do you think? Beans. 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 Corn. Corn. Okay. Well, you're close. Dog food. <laughs> 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 you know, I probably should have brought that on the airplane. But anyway, that's what that is. Dog food. So you guys, 
for your health today, you get to keep that egg. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So anyway, my idea is like that. All the way through, she talks about Play-Doh, getting a little Play-Doh, um, what do you call them, jars, cans, Play-Doh. You can get up to 30 for $5, which is pretty cheap. And uh, then have the kids get a plastic shower curtain that's see-through and then have little boards that are stacked boards underneath. And then they can put the Play-Doh on the stack lines as quarter notes or whatever using the Play-Doh. I thought that she said it's really messy. And I'm thinking, I would have to take a value on that day. <laughs> Still good ideas. Yeah. There you go, quarters. She talks about cookie sheets and magnets, all of that. You probably have used those before, but I think we need to be reminded sometimes about some cool little things to do with this. All right.